42-year-old Larry Holmes starts his ring walk, an entrance he has made 56 times before. The first time nearly 19 years ago in a fight versus Rodell Dupree when Holmes earned $63 in his pro debut. Tonight he'll earn $1 million, not his biggest purse, but at the age of 42 and after a three-year retirement, he has no complaints. He reigned as champion for seven years, did not get his due, and has let everyone know about it. He feels reclaiming the title in his 40s would finally secure him a place in boxing lore. Larry Holmes sparked by George Foreman's return. He came back last April, has won five fights, and he is hearing the boos from the crowd. This is Ray Mercer territory, Mercer from Newark, New Jersey. Tonight's certainly a major step up in competition for the former champ, but he says if he can't beat Ray Mercer, it's time to quit. And you will uh, be seeing Larry Holmes for the last time, says the former champ, if he can't get by Ray Mercer. Ray Mercer, the former Army sergeant, the late starter in the fight game. He won the Olympic gold at the age of 27. Doesn't have much time to waste. He's now 30 years old. He has won all 18 of his professional fights and has made up for the lost time because he has been involved in some ring wars in which he has come out shining, providing some dramatic knockouts. A one-punch knockout over Francisco Damiani and the devastation over Tommy Morrison in his last fight. He is building quite a reputation, a power pack flair for the dramatic and he hears it from the, the partisan crowd there's his dad Raymond Mercer cheering him on as Ray Mercer steps in the ring for the biggest fight in his pro career ladies and gentlemen Mr. Bob Aaron's top rank incorporated in association with the undisputed undefeated King of Fears Budweiser presents the featured bout of the evening the three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are John Potteray, Phil Newman, and Eugene Grant. And the man in charge, once the bell rings, is referee Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 233 pounds. Wearing the white trunks with red trim, his professional record, 53 victories, only three defeats, 37 KOs. He ruled the heavyweight division for seven and a half years as a heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Easton, Pennsylvania, the Easton assassin and former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, his opponent wearing the white trunks with black trim and weighing 228 and three quarter pounds. He's originally from Jacksonville, Florida, but now fights out of Newark, New Jersey. Ranked number five in the world by the IBF, this 1988 Olympic gold medal champion is now 18-0 as a professional with 13 KOs, and he has held the WBO world title in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Merciless Ray Mercer. I want you to respect the bell, and I want you to protect yourself at all times. Now touch him up. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. And a game face on Larry Holmes that we have not seen in the five fights of his comeback. Meanwhile, Ray Mercer playing to the partisan crowd. It's scheduled for 12. Mercer has given up his WBO heavyweight title, passed up number one contender Michael Moore to get a $1 million shot at Larry Holmes. Holmes says he's going to stand in the middle of the ring with Mercer. Holmes has to get that jab going. 
One of the best jabs in boxing, but you can see why. Watch him put that shoulder into that jab. He's got to use it, though. This jab in this first round, whoever controls the jab wins the fight. Mercer has been known to absorb punishment early and let his opponent wear himself down. And at 42, Larry Holmes, Mercer feels is made to order in that respect. But Mercer is a little weird, leery about the right hand, although he says he doesn't think Holmes can knock him out. Dangerous words. You know, he says in this fight, he's, it's going to be like a reverse of the Tommy Morrison fight. He's not going to stand there and take all those punches in the opening rounds of this fight. He's instead going to move, allow for Holmes to punch himself out, and then come back. Holmes using his first five fights. And he right smacks Mercer with the right. That wakes Mercer up. And Holmes, who certainly with the long arms and reach, the tactics trying to hold. There is Mercer in the clinch. And he continues. There goes Holmes. See Smoker trying to get between. And I think the fight's going to break out. And Smoker did a great job getting between these two. And that really riled Mercer up. Wake up, Carl. Holmes basing his confident feeling against Mercer on the fact that Mercer has had some difficulty with boxers and Damiano. He went the distance with Kimiel Odom 12 rounds and also the distance with Ozzy Acasio. And Holmes feels if he could get the jab going, but he has to get it going for 12 rounds, that he can outbox and tie up Mercer. He feels that Mercer, compared to some of the opponents he's had, that he is shaking up and Mercer going in. Who is known to find an opening and go right in as Tommy Morrison. And that's just why Larry Holmes should not stand flat footed. He said that he was going to stand flat footed and fight Mercer toe to toe. That's the wrong way to fight a big puncher like Mercer. Holmes has got a superior jab. He's got to use that and move, use his movement. And he can't get out of that game. Not at all. He cannot let down for one second. Here's, here he is trading with Ray Mercer. But you know, this is a good round for Mercer because he is making Holmes expend much more energy, I think, than Holmes wanted to in the first three minutes. But in doing that, he has got to be careful that he doesn't get tagged. Larry still has got the heavyweight power. Both of these men do. There is the left again doing the damage for Holmes. The way that Holmes stands with his body vertical to Mercer, he's eating those left hooks. Larry Holmes very slowly walking back to his corner after round one. And a la George Foreman, well, for a moment, looked like he was going to stand up in between rounds, but Holmes thinking better. Step to your right and keep your hands up. Get the jab off. Work it. There is Don Turner giving him instructions. He is telling him, get the jab off. Here is that big left hook from Ray Mercer. Another look at it. The left hook the did the damage. That was a jumping jab. Look at the feet cross from Larry Holmes. On top of him was Ray Mercer. Here it is again. Moving in with his jab is Mercer. I talked about the effective left jab that Holmes has. There's a good jab by Mercer. Little sloppy. Now, for Holmes, he should try to get Mercer out of the game. Make him mad. That will help an experienced fighter and hurt a young fighter. But that's what he did in the first round. Right. And he got in trouble for it. But that's what he wants to do every round. If he can get back and control that jab. Holmes says he'll challenge Mercer to get by his left. And Mercer got by his left in the first round. And he also says that he does not believe that Mercer has got big power. Those are dangerous words. When you're fighting heavyweights, there's no question that Mercer's got power. And really, both of these men, not only Mercer, but Larry Holmes, Larry Holmes at the age of 42. Father of five, four girls and one boy. His daughter, Misty, has two children, a boy and a girl. So it's grandfather, Larry Holmes, going up against Ray Mercer. Got a late start in this business and trying to make up for lost time. Matter of fact, Mercer, when he was learning to fight in the Army, his idol was then world champion, Larry Holmes. Good chopping right hand from Mercer. Now, where is that 
stinging left jab. Larry is going to have to make Mercer eat that left jab so that Mercer's not walking right in. See how Ray is walking through the defense of, of uh, Larry Holmes? And speaking of defense, the hands are down. Holmes' well, hands you, you are got, down. you got to protect that body. I can understand that. Well, his head is open for the right. Well, you forget about that. Back to the left jab. The key, the key to this fight is the jab. As it turns out, Ray Mercer may be made to order for Larry Holmes, but the Larry Holmes of 10 years ago, when he was able to get the jab going and also had the great lateral movement and the quickness, Holmes has already admitted in his comeback fights that he stands in front of his opponent more. He just can't move around for 12 rounds, and the dangerous thing is to stand in front of Mercer. But that was always his best weapon. He was terrific when he boxed around his opponent. And in the perfect moment, he sat down and threw big combinations. Wow, good right hands from Larry. Holmes unleashing. But Ray trying to get Holmes to throw. He's trying to make him work. Remember all the punishment absorbed by Ray Mercer in the first three rounds of the Tommy Morrison fight, and Morrison started running out of gas in the fourth. Mercer closed in early in the fifth, and Mercer's hopes are just to tire Holmes here. Let him punch himself out and then close in when Holmes is weary. Holmes, they come on in. And Holmes. And there is why. You look at their bodies, it appears that Holmes has less fat on his body than Ray Mercer. Looks like Larry's in better shape than Ray. You go by the body, there's more detail in Holmes' body. Big right hands for Larry Holmes to end the second round. He comes back in the second. Ray Mercer before has taken the great punishment. He has withstood it all, and he always finds a way to win. In his corner in between rounds, Hank Johnson telling him to go to the body of Holmes, start the process of trying to wear him down, and look for Holmes' right hand. You see it there, how low it's dropped, and that may be the undoing of Holmes before this one is over. The hands of Holmes are down, and he's open upstairs to the big right of Mercer. Mercer turned pro in February of 1989. That was a year after Holmes lost in his first comeback to Mike Tyson. Holmes says this story is different. Against Tyson, he came back cold. He wasn't ready. And you can see Larry setting that right hand up for Mercer, asking him to come in where Mercer can hit him with it. Why is Holmes uh, comfortable up against the ropes? He can, the because he can bounce off those ropes. When you're laying up against the ropes, it's, it's easier on your legs. And when your legs get old, they get tired quickly. Now, Mercer must go back to that left hook. Remember how much damage he did with that in the opening round? Holding off is Holmes. Mercer wants to tell Holmes, no effect. Remember, Mercer was out box for eight rounds by Francisco Damiani, outboxed badly, but then came up with a big punch in the ninth, and here is Holmes. All of a sudden, Holmes has some fans behind him. Rocking away upstairs, then downstairs at Ray Mercer. Holmes at home in the corner. He's got the big five-inch reach advantage. And using those ropes, he's bouncing off those ropes. When he comes back off the bounce, he's throwing the right hand. Trying to get a little bit extra power from those ropes. Oh, a missing chopping right hand from Mercer. Mercer, these, these right hands over on the top of the head are doing a lot of damage on Mercer. Those right hands, you can hit a man 15 times and finally that 16th punch, you go down. You hit him in the same spot. But Holmes here through three rounds, Sean. This is to, he's trying to slug with Mercer. Trying to measure Mercer, too. Mercer's got to get back with that left hook. 30 seconds left. Holmes still holding on to the rope. Not even using that hand for defensive purposes. But I still think Holmes playing into the hands of Mercer. This is 12-round schedule. And Holmes now trying to slow it down by holding on. How much will he have left in the later rounds? Schedule 12 rounder. 
And Larry Holmes has come out to fight. Very game and spirited in the first three rounds, exchanging with Ray Mercer, but uh, that may be a strategic mistake on the part of the former world champion. And a matter of fact, just got a warning from his corner as he came out. Don't burn yourself out. And we may see Larry Holmes now, who has certainly put in the rounds, but Ray Mercer, in only those 79, fought his handful of wars, but certainly nothing to match the experience that Holmes has. As a matter of fact, when Holmes came in, he said, well, if he knocks me down, I've been there before. If he thumps me, I've been thumbed before. If he hits me low, I've been hit low before. That there's nothing that Mercer can do to me that hasn't been done. But there's a lot of things I can do to him that he's never experienced. And now Steve Smoger steps between the two fighters. Well, there was a headlock by Mercer and a little shove. Smoger didn't like it. I could see Holmes kind of taking a rest here in the fourth round after but, expending so much in the first nine minutes. He is backpedaling. Remember what they told him between rounds, Al? They said, do not burn yourself out. He's trying to maneuver around to buy some time. All this time, he's away from Mercer. He's not going to get hit. I'm surprised to see that Mercer has not gone downstairs to the body. There is a roll of a fat down there. Loose body down there. Down, uh, Right above the cup, right above the belt line. But Mercer has been content with going upstairs. Mercer won the uh, heavyweight title in the Olympics at 196. His last fight against Mars, and he was 225, and he's up to 228 and three quarters for this one. Larry Holmes at 233, which for him is quite admirable, considering he started his comeback at 238 and has come down. He has trained hard for this. He won the title in 1978 against Ken Norton at 217. 35 seconds to go in the fourth. So Holmes is pacing himself through the fourth round. Now knows he has 30 seconds here that he may want to turn it up. Very smart fighter and an expert at that three-minute clock, knowing when the final 10 seconds of a round is, and he tries to score. Now back in the corner, remember that second round, how he laid back in that corner, in this same corner and scored. He was able to catch Ray Mercer with some right hands over the top. Here he is asking Mercy once again, come in here, I'm going to bounce off these ropes, and then I'm going to land the right hand. Round number five, Larry Holmes now dancing as he comes out for the fifth against the plotting Ray Mercer. Larry Holmes taking a different route in his comeback than George Foreman. Foreman three years working towards the Holyfield fight. Holmes not as patient. He's had five fights and he says, I'm ready to find out. That's why he's taking this fight against on, Ray Mercer. He's also making a million dollars here. So. The vault swings open to the winner. Talk already of the winner of this fight going on in June to fight George Foreman. There was a digging right hand to the body from, Mer from Mercer. Remember, this is the round. This is the time Mercer came out to finish off Tommy Morrison. And they start off slugging here in the fifth. There's the jab of Holmes. Through the first four rounds, Larry looked good. He was boxing at the first part of this round kind of like he used to do. But he's been content with laying up against those ropes, trying to play with the crowd a little bit. Now, up against those ropes, you can, you can lay against those ropes and rest. It is, a, it is an easier way to fight. And, and many times, a smarter way to fight. Holmes said that he considers Mercer, a journeyman. Good punching power, good determination, but as far as boxing ability and experience, Holmes feels that Mercer is lacking, that he is uh, somewhat limited. He says if he gets you in trouble, he's good, but Ray thinks that I'll get tired, Larry says. Good fighter, but he also adds he doesn't have any skills. He's not thinking inside the ring. And you know what? Remember the first round, that big left hook that Mercer landed? We've not good, seen it good. since. 
Holmes left hook almost knocked Holmes to the canvas. Holmes, before the fight, said he was going to draw Mercer into the ropes to unleash his combination. That he wanted to set some traps to see any traps that he may be setting. Well, I give him credit because he has stood toe to toe and fought with Mercer. He hasn't ran from him. He hasn't tried to, to put on any mask or do what he what he said he do something other than what he said he'd do. So I give him credit. Although I, I think it's going to cause him some problem as we get later in this fight. Big if it goes that long. Well, scoring well is Larry Holmes. Looking very impressive. Looking to 30 years old that Ray Mercer is. And Mercer is confused here in this fifth round. Of course, Mercer looking to 42 <laughs> years old. That I wouldn't get to say that. No, 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 no. That last round, Mercer continues to walk in, and he continues also to stay right at the wrong distance. 90% of the power of the punch is right on the end. That's where Mercer's staying. Now moving in and tying up would be a wise choice, especially when you're eating punches. Good showing from Larry Holmes. Taking a drink and not breathing extremely heavy in there. Watch him take deep breaths. Ray Mercer also not breathing heavy. Five rounds down, Larry Holmes coming up with a little more confidence. As we had mentioned before, in watching George Foreman's uh, comeback, which was not star-studded until he stepped up in level. His first fight stepping up, at least for a big fight, was Jerry Cooney, and you could certainly see the intensity level rising in Foreman, and we're seeing the same thing as we had possibly anticipated before the fight with Larry Holmes. This is not the same Holmes we had seen in the first five fights when he was unable to take out an Eddie Gonzalez in an art card. But using that to sharpen his skills. And he looks good here in these first five rounds. You know, you got to have somebody who's coming at you to make an exciting fight for Larry Holmes. Larry is, all his career, he's been a beautiful boxer. When he's in there against a boxer, it makes it difficult. Now, what he had to do is he had to get back on, the, back in the mix of boxing and do it in a good fashion. With a fight like this, he can do that. And he almost walked into There's, that left hook. That left hook is the, is the punch for Mercer. There it is. With the combination followed by the right. Thank you. Larry was trying to sucker punch Mercer. Mercer saw it. Holmes, is he talking to the Mercer fans in Mercer's corner? Or just talking to all the folks viewing? Holmes obviously watching uh, Jimmy Connors in the U.S. Open. It'd be great if they could talk back. What do you think they'd say if they could talk back? He's doing good. Larry Holmes is doing good. Ray Mercer is confused. Holmes turned pro 19 years ago. Mercer's been only fighting for eight years. When he was 22 years old, Army sergeant stationed in West Germany. His base coach asked him to spar with the camp super heavyweight, and he told Mercer if he sparred, he'd waive a pending 30-day bivouac, a wilderness maneuver. And uh, Mercer said anything to get out of Bivouac. A month later, Mercer was the top big man on the camp boxing team. Of course, went on to win the Armed Forces Championship, swept through the Olympics with four straight knockouts to win the Olympic gold. And this is only his 19th professional fight. And a late bloomer is already 30 years old. Developing a cult following with the way he takes punishment and keeps on ticking and finds a way to win in a dramatic fashion. But he may have a successful career, but with all his punishment, may be short lived. I own him, keep your hands up. He's just a time. I know. I know he is. He's tired of it. His mouth is wide open. Okay. Give him a shot. Give him a shot. Back him up with two jabs. Bing, 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 bing. Listen to him. 
Things are heating up. The crowd really getting into this one. They didn't think this fight would still be going on here in the seventh round, but the former champ is surprising them and surprising Ray Mercy. This is a scheduled 12-rounder. It is a non-title fight. Mercer gave up his WBO title, passing up a mandatory defense against the number one contender, Michael Moore. He felt uh, that's a fight later down the road, a good matchup, but he wanted to get a million. He thought perhaps a quick and easy million over a former champ, the 42-year-old Larry Holmes. And that right uppercut from Larry is doing a lot of damage. Right on the end of the nose with that punch. Now they were telling Larry between rounds, they were saying, back up Ray Mercer, back him up. You have to force him back. But he's doing so great going backwards himself, Larry, and so great in those ropes. Come get him. Larry Holmes also uh, playing to the camera. You know, Holmes went into this fight and said, who's Ray Mercer? He beat Tommy Morrison. Holmes feels Morrison could fight. He was taking the distance by Kimuel Odom, and Ozzy Ocasio was losing to Damiani when he came up with a big punch. That's how Holmes thought about this one. Even though Holmes may have had a, somewhat of a fantasy trying to recapture his youth, he's certainly not the fighter of his championship years. But I tell you, he is picking up some fans here tonight. Good performance, again. but you cannot let down against a fighter like Ray Mercer. He has no quit in him. Should Holmes be allowed to be holding on to the ropes as he has been? That's not, that's not against the rules. What referees don't like you to do is use those ropes as leverage with one of your hands. Fighting back is home. Mercer has got to get back to throwing some punches. Too many of these rounds are slipping by for Ray. Holmes's idea was to perhaps out jab and out box Mercer, and he has even out slugged Ray Mercer. Going into the later rounds, feeling that Mercer wouldn't be able to knock him out, and that Holmes would pile up enough points to win on decision. Boom! That right hand is the same one that had done the damage throughout this fight some blood from the mouth of Mercer. Mercer just standing in front of Holmes. Holmes knew that Mercer would be there. Mercer not one to move his head. He will take four punches to the face to get one of his own in and or to just get inside. But he only needs one. That's right. Against Damiani when he was behind, his corner was getting very concerned. Mercer said, don't worry, I'm going to catch him. You know something, Al? These punches from Larry Holmes will add up. Finally, one of these shots will put Mercer down on the canvas. The big crowd excited about this one. Our main event on USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Eighth round action. Larry Holmes taking it to Ray Mercer. Holmes doing it with guile. He's doing it with guts. And experience. Look at Mercer following Larry around just at the wrong distance to be at. Larry is moved, using his jab and stepping around. This isn't taking much energy out of him. He's walking around this ring. Mercer is past his moment of truth. And for Larry Holmes, this is where uh, he has averaged uh, his stoppage of fights. 37 knockouts for Holmes in his 53 victories. He has lost on three occasions. Twice to Michael Spinks in controversial decision fashion, and once in non-controversial knockout fashion to Mike Tyson. There's the jab snapped out by Holmes. But with that Tyson fight, Al, he says I was coming off 16 months layoff. That's why he came into this fight with five fights under his belt. Versus Larry Holmes made a big mistake, he admits, when he fought Mike Tyson. He just lost his championship. He lost the last two fights before Mike. He said Tyson caught him at the right time. But now, with problems, with Mike Tyson's problems, now Larry believes he can regain the heavyweight championship of the world. Holmes's view of the heavyweight division, he says, look at Foreman gets $5 million for beating a guy named Jimmy Ellis, who we saw lose to Tony Willis a couple of weeks ago. Holmes feels, he says, hey, Holyfield's a light heavyweight. Razor Ruddock is a left hook, but he doesn't jab anymore. Riddick Bowe, just a tall guy with a jab, a front runner. 
And he says that's why he came back. He says the money is there. He feels the division is there. That again is Larry Holmes being quoted. Here's the left there hook by Mercer. Left hook. We have not seen enough of it from him. Holmes is the four to one underdog in this fight. And he has maintained a high intensity and a very busy evening now through eight rounds. You know, he got blasted in the two fights against the rotund Eddie Gonzalez and an unknown by the name of Art Card for not putting them out. But Larry Holmes was using that as an extensive sparring session. His problem was just going national TV with that. His first few fights out didn't look good, but he was getting the ring rust off. I mean, Tommy Morrison should have had a few fights like that before taking on Mercer. That could be a call to keep some fighters off national television early. <laughs> good left hook from Merciless Ray Mercer. There it is, right at the end of the round. Four round fight now. Ray Mercer with that left hook. We have to see more of those from him. He is waiting too much for Larry to go. Larry to get off. There's a good right hand. The single punches are coming from Mercer, but Larry Holmes is the man doing the bulk of the damage. A lot of concern in the corner of Mercer. There are screaming instructions at him. And some of his fans here at ringside yelling into the corner, Ray, you're blowing it. Larry Holmes says he's going to fight Mercer until there's no more fight left in my body. And so far, he's living up to that. Eight rounds down. It's scheduled for 12. And I tell you, you got to give a lot of credit to, to Larry Holmes. 42 years old, still up there fighting. He is going to be so sore tomorrow. He will hurt all up and down his body. His legs will hurt. He Everything may, on his body. He may quit even if he yeah. wins. He's <laughs> part of Oh, I don't want to do that again. There's a right hand by Mercer. Mercer's never been down in a pro fight. Larry Holmes hasn't been on the canvas. Knocked down on three different fight occasions by Tyson. Also, early in the career, came off the canvas twice to retain his championship against uh, Ernie Shavers and Ronaldo Snipes. Back when he was the best. Oh, he was so good and fought everyone Larry Holmes did. His career, Cooney, Ken Norton, Leon Spinks, Carl the Truth Williams. Well, he made 20 successful defenses over a seven-year reign. Only Joe Lewis reigned longer as a heavyweight champ. And he beat six former and future world champs, Ali, of course, uh, past his prime, Weaver, Burbick, Spinks, as in, as in Leon, Bone Crusher, Smith, Witherspoon. Lee. Yeah, here's an opportunity for Mercer. Larry Holmes has, has hesitated for a moment. He sat down just for one moment. Oh, that woke him up. And look at Mercer moving now. And Mercer, this... The first time we've Rare seen time, move. yeah, moving backwards. That right hand did damage. Oh. Up goes Mercer with a little right hand. Well, Larry Holmes not going exclusively to the jab. He said he was going to go in and slug it out with uh, Mercer, but he has uh, balanced his attack. Oh, he guts and determination. There's a time remaining in the ninth. This is a scheduled 12 rounder. Now, originally it was supposed to be a 10, but the two fighters agreed to go 12. I think a 10 would have been more to the advantage of Holmes, who may have racked up some points on the board. Two more rounds just gives Mercer two more rounds of an opportunity to get the shot in. And we just heard a chant. Larry Holmes has turned this crowd around. He was moved when he stepped into the ring, but the crowd chanting, Larry, Larry, here in the ninth. And the crowd with a cheer, and it's going for Larry Holmes. Nine rounds down. And the word goes on in the corner of Holmes. 
Couple more like that. Come on like that when we home free. Two more around. Don't yeah. get counted. Keep your hands up. Ten's coming. Ten's coming. Yeah, we'll tell you. How you feel? All right, Larry? We are great. Come on now. We got a three-round fight. We're back to the amateur days. Man, you're the champ out here, baby. I got to do it. You go, do it. You gonna do it? No, you You go, do it. Go, there is go, the right hand from Larry Holmes in that ninth round. That has been his best punch so far. He has been a great puncher late in the fight. He's not a good puncher early. He's not a George Foreman where he mauls over his opponent. He puts the right punch in the right place at the right time. That's where he's been great in his career. And Holmes now more and more determined, sitting on the stool, talking to his corner. Saying, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. He can feel it now. And you know, Mercer has to pick up the pace. Maybe Holmes has been waiting for the jam in the last three rounds to keep Mercer away. Mercer's gotta pick up the pace and put down the punches. Seven to two, I've got it scored. Holmes way ahead, looking very impressive. He has outsmarted Ray Mercer. But there is no quit in Ray Mercer. Remember, Mercer outboxed in every round behind on all cards against Francisco Damiani, but he won the WBO Heavyweight Championship. And it was in the ninth round. Mercer, one blow, broke the nose of Damiani and broke his heart. Holmes waiting back again. He said he's going to draw Mercer into the corner. He's had success in the corner. Why not go back to him? Mercer's corner yelling to their fighter to be first. Get off the blocks. Staying at just the wrong distance with, with Larry Holmes. He either needs to move in with some punches or move out away from that danger zone. Or go to the angles. Legendary trainer Eddie Futch said that Holmes in his prime, similar, similar in a way to Muhammad Ali, the good jab, the good right hand, but he felt Holmes hit harder with the jab than Ali. Ali's jab kept you off balance. Holmes' jab was a real punch. The right of Holmes connects with Mercer and again. And now blood from the nose of Ray Mercer. Down to 30 seconds, one more round coming to a close. And Holmes certainly doing enough to put some more points on the board. Still jabbing, still moving his Holmes. Turning back the clocks. Or perhaps, as Holmes says, uh, he's fighting, uh, fighting a guy who's just made to order. Whether it's Larry Holmes of 1982 or Larry Holmes of 1992. Ooh, these last two rounds. One, two. You walked them good. One, two, and you're Stay out of that yeah. corner. Stay there in this corner. Nearly six years ago in the second controversial fight with Spinks. 15 rounder last time Holmes has got more than 10. Of course the fight following that was the fourth round knockout at the hands of Tyson and then the three year retirement. And since that time in his five comeback fights he's gone 10 rounds on a couple occasions but he has now stepped in to round number 11 as far as Mercer is concerned. He has gone beyond nine rounds only twice. And those are a couple of 10 or 12 rounders. Kimuel Odom, who he defeated, and Burt Cooper, who he defeated in a war. Holmes knows whatever Mercer has left, he's going to say the next six minutes. Knows he will be pressed. Well, these figures he should be pressed. He is pressing. Mercer is pressing home. But he's pressing him at the wrong distance at the wrong pace. Standing right in front of Holmes. Watch. All Larry has to do is take a half step back.
Throw that jab, look at him. This is playing with, with Mercer. Now on the inside, watch him tie up Mercer, the referee breaks him. Larry Holmes, playing with intelligence, playing with wisdom, experience. Before the fight, Hank Johnson in the corner of Ray Mercer said he has great respect for Holmes, as does his fighter Mercer, but he thinks Holmes, who has two or three good fights left in him, took this fight against Mercer too soon. Well, it looks like he was right on one count, but Holmes has some good fights left in him. And Holmes has to feel he didn't take this fight soon enough. So Larry Holmes taking a different comeback route, not going three years as George Foreman did, but Holmes got back in the play a little later in life. Well, it is surprising to me that Larry is putting on a great fight. Got him way ahead. I've only given two rounds to Ray Mercer. This turns out to be an interesting scenario. The first fight, the former champ coming out of retirement, Jimmy Paul, takes out the rising undefeated fighter in Todd Foster. And now Larry Holmes has to feel if he goes another three minutes and 20 seconds, he may have duplicated that feat. Maybe it's time for comebacks. Don't say you that. Never know. You never know. <laughs> looks good. Now Ray Mercer is fighting out of desperation. <laughs> 11 down. One to go. What's going to happen now in the corners as they get set for the 12th and final round? We hold free. That's big ass in that round. How you feel? He got you got down. three more he minutes of down. you got three more minutes of classicness in you. Last one we touch him, Larry. Keep that body Tell down and shoot the right hand. Keep that body down and shoot that right hand over it when he come in like that. Are you the champ? You the champ. Move your head in front. Before the fight, Ray Mercer said, if this one goes the distance, if Larry Holmes goes 12 foot rounds, and I can't take him out, I'll give the fight to him. It may not be Ray's choice. In my card, he's already given it to him. Look at Holmes playing with the crowd, trying to win the crowd over. And you know what? He has won a lot of the crowd over. The boos started at the first of this fight, but now those boos have, boos have turned into cheers. Several of those homes fight 15 rounds, so he uh, certainly brings the experience into the final three minutes. Knows every way to hold on and get through this time. Mercer now measuring him. Mercer has to close in. Mercer, from our scorecard, needs the knockout. Again, has to come up with the dramatic. But does Mercer have the experience to knock out an experienced Larry Holmes? Holmes knows he's way ahead. He'll know how to hold on, how to tie up, how to last through this round. The opportunities have passed, and Mercer is desperate. And again, some chance for Larry. Larry, the booze in the beginning were more from the Mercer fans. There's a partisan Mercer crowd. He's from Newark, New Jersey. We're in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Well, not uh, a reflection of the feeling of the crowd about the career of Larry Holmes. And Ray Mercer is running out of time. And Holmes still looks fresh. 
He looks like the younger fighter of the two. One minute left, 60 seconds and counting. Now here's the opportunity for Mercer. Got to get those hands moving. Holm started very quickly in the first few rounds. Thought that it might be a mistake. He would run out of gas. He hasn't. Holmes now screaming in the face of Mercer. And Holmes saving some. In the end, remember, he's reminded, don't get careless. You can never be saved by the bell in Atlantic City. No round. So Holmes can't get careless down to the last second. In the final 10 seconds, you'll see Larry Holmes pour it on. And Mercer has, this fight. Mercer has Mercer. nothing left. And Mercer's looking for the final bow. Larry Holmes may have just pulled it off. His corner thinks so. I think so. I think so. And Mercer, who remembered what Larry Holmes, then the champion of the world, fought Muhammad Ali. Get there, get there. Get there. And then Ali him. come back. I got him. Ali certainly passed his prime. Holmes said he had hated every minute of that fight once Ali's chief par sparring partner. And now it was Mercer who came into this fight saying that he would end the career of his legendary hero, Larry Holmes. And I'll bet you Mercer hated every round of this fight. <laughs> As it turned out. Well, we'll find out how exactly it turned out. We'll be back for the decision in just a moment. scores the bout 117 to 112 Eugene Grant scores the bout 117 to 111 John Potter has it 115 to 113 for the winner by unanimous decision from Easton Pennsylvania the former heavyweight champion of the world Larry 